What's up everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. In today's video, we're going to focus on the first exam by Cambridge, specifically on parts three and four of your speaking exam. Some of you are going to take this exam at the end of July, and I really hope that this English bit can help you with your exam preparation. And for those who are taking the exam at La Escuela Oficial de Idiomas, this video can be also useful for the part of the dialogue. Are you ready to prepare your speaking exam? So, let's get started. First, I'm going to explain the structure of today's video. In the description box, you can find timestamps so that you can go directly to that part of the video you're most interested in. So today's video consists of four parts. In the first part, we're going to speak about part three of your speaking exam. In the second part, we're going to look at part four. In the third part, we're going to talk about the assessment scales. And in the last part of the video, I'm going to give you some useful language that you could use in parts three and four. So let's start with the first part of this video where I'm going to explain what the third part of the speaking exam is like. So part three consists of two tasks. In the first task, you're given one question to discuss with your partner and five written prompts. And you have two minutes to talk and answer this question. For example, in this case, the question we have, why would these ideas attract more tourists to the town? And the five prompts are building a large nightclub, putting up security cameras, having more shops, building holiday flats and providing parks. It's really important to mention that you're not expected to talk about all the prompts. It's better to focus on three or maximum four prompts, but do it in detail by expressing and justifying your opinions and speculating. So my recommendation is not to rush through all the prompts, but focus on three or four and give reasons and express your opinions. In the second task of part three, you're given one minute and you usually have to choose one or two best ideas or options. For example, in this case, we have one minute to decide which idea would be best for the town. And it's also important to say that you're not expected to reach an agreement with your partner. So if you disagree, it's not a problem. The most important thing is to give your reasons why you choose this idea and not another one. Okay, important things to bear in mind when doing part three is that you need to interact with your partner at all times. It's really important to agree, disagree, to ask questions. Listen carefully to your partner and react to what they say. It's really important to do it in this part. My second tip is don't be afraid to disagree. If you disagree with your partner, do it respectfully and politely. In the last part of this video, I'm going to give you some useful language that I'm sure can help you to do it correctly. And last but not least, don't dominate the conversation. Remember that it's not a monologue, it's a dialogue, so let your partner speak and express their opinion. Now let's move on to the second part of this video where we're going to talk briefly about part four of the speaking exam. In this part, you're asked different questions related to the topic that you had in part three. The questions can be individual or directed to both candidates. Remember, you need to give full answers to the questions and provide reasons and examples. So in this part, you can also interact a little bit with your partner by agreeing 
or disagreeing or commenting on something your partner has just said. And now let's continue with the third part of this video where I'm going to explain the assessment scales. Remember that in this exam you're assessed on your individual performance and there are four scales to assess you. The first one is grammar and vocabulary. Here the examiners will look if you use a wide range of vocabulary and grammar structures. So remember to use different tenses and also rich vocabulary. The second scale is discourse management. Basically, it means if you can speak with little hesitation and fluently, if you can organize your ideas clearly, and if you use linkers and connectors. The third scale is pronunciation, and the last one is interactive communication. So in this scale, they assess if you listen to your partner and respond to what they say. Also, if you contribute, add your ideas, opinions and suggestions. Also, if you initiate ideas, show initiative and work towards an outcome. In the speaking exam, you can get 60 marks and you need 36 to pass this part. And now let's move on to the last part of this video, where I'm going to give you some useful language to use in parts 3 and 4. Remember that you can download the document from the description box. So first of all, I'm going to give you some questions that you can use to start a discussion. For example, uh, you can start by asking your partner, OK, shall we begin? Or OK, shall we start? Or would you like to start? Or which one shall we start with? You have different prompts, so you can, you can ask, which one shall we start with? Or shall we start with this one? Or we could start by speaking about having more shops. Now let's look at some questions you can ask if you haven't understood your partner or the examiner. You can ask, for example, do you mean I have to do this? Or I'm sorry, did you say? something or so what you're saying is something. Now we're going to look at some expressions that you can use when you want to agree with your partner. For example, you can say so do I or neither or neither do I. The pronunciation is or neither or neither but it's not neither. And remember to change the auxiliary. Okay, it depends on the tense you're using. So it can be so did I or so have I or so am I. Okay, so be careful to change the auxiliary. You can also say that's very true. Good point. I hadn't thought of that. Exactly. Yes, I suppose you're right. I agree up to a point, but or I agree to a certain extent. These two expressions are very useful if you agree with your partner, but not with everything they say. And you can also use the expression, that's just what I was going to say. And now let's look at some expressions to disagree politely. For example, you can say, I'm not convinced, or I'm not sure about that, or I see what you mean, but, or well, actually, I'm not sure about that. As we said before, it's really important to interact with the partner and ask questions. So now let's look at some questions you can ask your partner. For example, what about you? Or how about you? What's your view on that? Would you agree with that? What do you think? Don't you think? Or, for example, you can ask, shall we move on to providing parks now? Let's look at some expressions that can be useful if you want to correct yourself or explain something in other words. For example, you can say, I mean, or what I meant was, or what I'm trying to say is, or rather, which means must be in. For example, we could choose this one, or rather another one. 
And now some very useful expressions to give you time to think. Sometimes uh, you don't know what to say immediately, so while you're pronouncing these expressions, you have a little time to think about what you're going to say next. For example, you can say, okay, let me see, or let me think, or well, it's difficult to say, of course, but you can also say, as far as I know, or as far as I'm concerned, or right. And now let's look at some phrases you can use to interrupt somebody when you want a turn. For example, you can say, I was just going to say, or can I add something here? Or let's talk about something. And to finish, let's look at some ways to summarize your discussion in task two, speaking part three. For example, you can say, basically, we're saying that, or anyway, I think we'd better make up our minds which one to choose. The verb to make up your mind is the same as to decide. So I really hope you found this English bit useful. If you did, don't forget to give it a like and to subscribe to the channel by clicking this red button. And of course, if you're taking the first exam soon, good luck with your exam. With that being said, thanks for watching and see you next week. Ciao!